Good morning, welcome to Morning Meditations. And today I'm just looking at Proverbs 14 and uh, verses 8 through 15 here and uh, see with these verses how they go together. And so Proverbs 14 verse 8, it says, The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider and heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. And so we see here the Bible is telling us uh, something of the, the matters of life. And uh, contrast to just some of the basic lessons of life we learn, and it shows maybe what the foolish or simple person would want to believe or react in some situation, and it shows how the righteous or the wise person uh, would would think or behave in those situations. And uh, just starting in verse 8, it tells us, you know, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. You know, a wise person, someone that wants to please God, is trying to understand the decisions he's making in life. They're trying to make decisions according to the Lord's law and the Lord's will. And so that's their wisdom. But the folly of a foolish person is deceit. And so what that is saying is a, a foolish person is okay with just not thinking too hard about it. They're okay with deceiving themselves. You know, they're okay with uh, you know their conscience or, or someone else in their life warns them. God's word warns them about the, the folly or the foolishness of their ways. Uh, the danger of it and uh, they'd rather you know ignorance is bliss and that's what it's talking about here they they would rather just ignore it you know they they're they're okay with just deceiving themselves that they they have actually tricked and, and lied about themselves to think you know they're okay as we keep reading you know fools make a mock at sin but among the righteous there is favor and so we see that the foolish people have deceived themselves when it even comes to sin uh, they just you know they mock at it uh, it's okay they've deceived themselves into thinking it's no big deal uh, we'll just mock at that. You know, someone brings it up. Someone tries to correct us. We'll mock at it. We'll laugh at it. Uh, you know, that's all. We, you know, we don't can't have a serious reaction. Can't face it seriously. We'll just mock it. But the righteous, there's favor. Uh, the heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not enter meddle with his joy. Uh, the Bible is there telling us, you know, inside on the outside they can be mocking. Uh, they can uh, be deceiving themselves. They can trick themselves. You know, and, and sometimes we see people like this who have just spurned God's word and God's law. And uh, the outward persona that they put on is that life is just a, you know, a big grand time to be lived for self. Life is wonderful. Life is great. Uh, you know, they don't need God. And they, they put out all of this, uh, you know, overcompensating for what is going on inside the lack uh, of love and purpose that they feel and uh, the sin that is in their life. And so they've deceived themselves. And on the outside, they, it seems like everything's great. Life's just one big party, but the Bible says the heart knows its own bitterness. Uh, inside, there's that bitterness, and they, they know it, and a stranger does not intermeddle with his joy. And so, it's the saying, you know, sometimes what's on the inside and what's on the outside, uh, they can look like different things. Uh, and the foolish person, make no mistake, it's, it's not all fun and games on the inside. And uh, the house of the wicked, verse 11, the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. And to just notice it uses the word house for the wicked, he uses the word tabernacle for the righteous. And, uh, you know, it seems like the, the wicked have a more permanent dwelling place. It seems that things are going well for them. They have a house. The righteous person's only living in a tabernacle or, you know, a tent. And uh, the Bible says, no, their house will be overthrown. Uh, it, it can, the appearances are that everything is set for them. Everything's made. They've lived their life putting themselves first. And it looks like that's worked out. They got that big house and things are looking permanent. And the Bible says that the wicked are going to be overthrown. Uh, but the, the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Uh, they will continue to grow. And so what this whole passage is about, it's about appearances. It's about what we look at when we see uh, people that choose different ways in life and how appearances here and now in this world can be deceiving. And uh, just finish it off with a couple more. And, and uh, we're about halfway through and the, the other half just commentates on what we've already read. And so verse 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And doesn't that just sum it up? So there's a way that seems right to us. It's a way that looks okay for us. There's a way where we can deceive ourselves and mock at sin and, and just it, it looks like it all works out. And the Bible says sin leads to death. Uh, the consequences of sin, the wages of sin is death. 
Uh, James tells us that, you know, that God does not attempt us with sin and evil. A God is perfect and pure and holy. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And, and it brings forth sin in our life. And sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death. And so there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And then it just mentions what we've already talked about. Verse 13, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. And so the mocker of the scorner, uh, he can look joyful, but inside it's sorrow. And the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. So a fool can make a mock of sin. And in the end of the day, though, the Bible tells us it's going to come back. He's going to be filled with his own ways. Uh, the sin will, will come out again in his life. Uh, the consequences will come back to hurt him. And uh, it, it, whatever he's living, uh, whatever he's serving, whatever he's going for, so it's going to be in his own heart, it tells us. And if he lives for evil, if he lives for wrong, if he lives for empty, mean, meaningless waste, that's what's going to fill his heart someday. But a good man will be satisfied. And the simple, they can believe every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. And so verse 15 finishes like we started in verse 8. Uh, the prudent man, the wise man is going to watch his way. He's going to look well toward the things he's going to. He's going to look beyond the superficial appearances to see what is God's will and purpose. What is the end result of the choices I'm making? Uh, but the simple man and the foolish man, they don't have that type of foresight. They just say, you know, this looks good. Uh, I believe it. I'll take it. And they'll just go with whatever their heart, their gut, their friend tells them and the mock us in. And so let's be careful about appearances. Uh, let's understand this as we look at the world around us. God has a plan and a purpose. And the best place we can be is, is prudently and wisely uh, following God's ways. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you.